$110 million in both financial and physical aid is going to be going to Ukraine. Here's the Prime Minister saying why. We'll continue to work collaboratively with our partners. We're continuing to train Ukrainian forces in the United Kingdom and we'll continue to engage with Ukraine for as long as it takes to support President Zelensky and the people of Ukraine in this struggle. Uh, this is a significant commitment, but it's one that is necessary. All right, Nicholas, um, let's talk this out for a second here. Australia was involved in forever wars in Iraq for the best part of 20 years, mm -hmm. Afghanistan for the best part of 20 years, uh, cost a lot of money, lost lives. Mm -hmm. The result in Iraq is hardly a, a free-flowing democracy, and we know that we fought the Taliban in order to hand it back to the Taliban. I have no doubt, Russia's the bad guy, right? We need to push them back as hard as we can. But how do we make sure this doesn't end up being another forever war? How do we make sure that that's the case? Because, again, two things can be true at the same time. We need to repel Russia, but you can't pay for it forever. Yeah, I mean, the Australian government has made a substantial contribution so far with the extra $100 million today. It's sort of eight, $900 million, I believe. So on a per capita basis, I think we're certainly uh, contributing our fair share. And, and look, if, if required, I think Australia should contribute more. The big thing that the Ukrainians need at the moment, of course, is uh, air power. Uh, they need those F-16s. Uh, you know, the counter-offensive by Ukraine has not made the quick and early breakthroughs that many of us hoped. And the challenge for the Ukrainians is they don't have control of the airspace. The Russians have got the superior air systems and they need those F-16s from the West so that they can uh, make the breakthroughs we want to see them make. So I really hope that Western powers give them those the fighter planes, mm. the air power, so that they can break through with the counter -offense. But again, again, Caroline, I'm trying to step back mm. a little here, where obviously I understand what's happening in Ukraine, I understand the need uh, for the good guys to win, but the same logic was put into two forever wars that... Uh, history will view as it does, but certainly the, it can't be limitless. And again, who is trying to de-escalate this situation right now? It's certainly not uh, NATO, it's not the American president, it's not the UK prime minister, it's not the Australian prime minister. I'm not saying that because I'm doing Russian talking points or all that other bullshit that people throw around when you ask. Like, I'm a no-war guy, right? Yeah. And I'd like to get this one turned down as fast as we can. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's really difficult without the benefit of hindsight to know how much is enough, mm. how hard we go in, how early, how long for... And in 5, 10, 20 years' time, whether someone looks back and goes, well, you know, we shouldn't have done that, we shouldn't have got involved, I don't know. I mean, I think, like, it is important to stand up for principles and stand up for democracy. And I get it, we're only 18 months We back a Ukraine, exactly. But, honestly, it's one of those situations where... Time will tell. Well, just again, it's an okay conversation to have without somebody uh, declaring you to be, as I say, you know, Russian misinformation or all that other crap that gets used to shut you down, as it was previously in the other two wars of Iraq and Afghanistan, somehow being pro terrorism when you're talking about how long these things have gone on for.